I, I know that you have a new member of your family. You have a one and a half year old now, Ben, Benjamin. Um, how do you balance the pull of home as a new father and the pull of <laughs> the road? But also, I know you haven't been on the road as much, but being in the music industry, um, singer, songwriter, musician, I, I know it's not, I know firsthand it's not an easy balance, but um, a lot of careers, uh, it's difficult to balance family and work. So what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> That's a great setup. You, you tell me, that. I, what do you think? I don't know. Um, you know, I, 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 there's been a couple of pretty significant revelations for me in, the, in this last year and a half. I think, uh, one, I've wanted to be a dad for a long time, so it's been, you know, it's so great. It's like the best job ever, you know, um, most of the time. And uh, <laughs> that, that, like, I, I remember, I, I distinctly remember at a month, when Ben was a month old, you know, and he's, we're getting up, because I, I was, being a musician, I was able to be home a lot and help Annie, you know, with him at night when, the deal was she would feed him, but any other time I would get up. So if he was just up and crying, I would get up with him. And so I remember very distinctly the moment that we had a friend come over who was pregnant with a third. And I genuinely asked her without any sarcasm was like, why are you doing this again? <laughs> and I remember her laughing and going, oh, he gets better. And I was like, I don't believe you. I really don't. <laughs> um, I, and I, I remember very, very specifically having the acute feeling of, I don't understand why people have more people. Like, <laughs> this is a nightmare. Um, and then at, you know, four or five months, I was like, oh, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> um, but I think for me, like, um, that, that's obviously the priority. So, so one of the things that I feel like I'm really learning, that I feel like God is trying to teach me, and I have to be careful about saying that because I could get to heaven and be just, that was wrong, Dave. You were wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you forgive me. <laughs> okay. Um, you have to. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's terrible theology. Um, I can just see what you got. Would you leave, Dave? We're not teaching that here. Um, no. Um, but one of the big things that I'm learning is this. I feel like God is trying to show me, and this is a simple thought, but do the things that I know I need to do. So... Obviously, being a husband, being a dad, uh, are at the top of that list. And I'm really praying and hoping that if I do those like I know I'm supposed to do, then God will take care of the rest of the stuff. Because I think, for me, I can get really messed up on, like, well, don't I need to provide first and, like, do that? And then I can be a good husband, then I can be a good father. And I think God's really helping me understand that, the more margin that I can give the Lord in my life, the better it is. Now, it's a lot harder because I think it takes a lot more faith and it's a lot more trying. But I feel like this is the thing God is teaching me right now. It's like, Dave, if you'll give me more space and you do the things that you know you need to do, not the stuff that you wonder and that maybe you feel a compulsion or a, um, like you, you're supposed to do to be a good dad or a husband or an artist, I promise I'll provide, but just do those things. Do those couple of things and do them well, and then I'll take the rest of the space and I'll fill it up with what's supposed to be there. And so for me, I think that's been the real revelation is like, because um, I just think I've realized, and I don't know if you guys feel this way, but as I get older, these little things that guilt me to death start to creep in. You know, like, well, that's not what a good dad would do. That's not what a good husband would do. That's not what an artist would do. That's not what a songwriter can do. And I think it takes a lot to sort of, you know, filter through. Like my dad told me when he discipled me in high school, which is one of the great things about having a preacher's a dad or a pastor's a dad, but when, when what you mean when he sort of so sat, we met like once a week for a year and we just went through the Bible and he was kind of like, here's some things for you to know and that have helped me and could help you, which was so cool. Uh, but one of the things he taught me that was, has been a fundamental in my life is that, um, Christ convicts and Satan condemns. And I think as I get older, I'm learning to listen, to know which voice is which, you know, the one that makes me feel small and stupid. That's not Jesus. That's Satan. But when I feel something like, ah, I should really not do this, or I should apologize, you know, I feel a weight, that is Jesus. And so I need to do those things. So I think as I get older, I'm really having to divine between the two of things of like, okay, am I just feeling guilty because I feel like this is something that I should do, or, or is this something I do need to do because this is something that's good for me or whoever? So I think um, those things have really come, you know, as I've gotten older, I think. And so career-wise, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do is sort of like, okay, do I need to do these things because... It is smart and it's wise, and this is what I'm supposed to do. Or am I doing these things because I need? I feel like I need to be busy, or I feel like I need to, you know, mm -hmm. 
this is what defines me is because I'm an artist, which I think is a real struggle for all of us because, yeah. you know, especially as an artist, even Gabe Dixon Band is still your name when that season was going and now you, it's, I think mm -hmm. it's a hard thing for a lot of us and a lot of my friends that are artists because we are, our, we're the thing, we're the product. And so that you can't sort of escape into like, well, I work for this or do this, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you kind of have to, you're always, yeah. everybody looks at what you do is what you do. It's like, well, you know, so it's, it can be sort of an extra burden, you know? Yeah. And thanks for uh, answering all these sort of, you know, really uh, tough questions. <laughs> and, um, I, I, well, I think we just have a, a minute uh, left, but I, I wanted to ask you about one more song and maybe play one more song. Um, I think it's it's a pretty special and powerful kind of song that is written in such a way that it can be about either a romantic or a personal relationship or a relationship with God. You know, I think that you know you two and Sting have accomplished this. Uh, uh, it's just a couple people that come to mind, but I, I feel like you've done that on a few occasions. God gave me you. Um, uh, we're gonna, Dave and I are going to play a couple songs in the worship service, uh, one called Grace's Amazing Hands, one called What I Need. I feel like both of those do that. Um, and this may sound like a stretch, but there's a song called Until You, and I wonder if that song is secretly about Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, I think they, <laughs> that, that was that was a great I just, thing I read with Bono. Like I read this yeah. interview with Bono, and somebody basically asked him that, and he was like, you know, he basically confessed to like, yeah, like most of these love songs, like mm -hmm. um, all that I want is you, like all these songs that you hear mm -hmm. are like, oh my gosh, you started listening to them a different way, and he knows that he's doing that as he writes them, but he also knows that mm -hmm. if he released a song as a, like this is my Christian song, the world would be like, oh gosh, you know? <laughs> right? Cool. I thought I thought maybe that was the case.